This week on What The Net, we're going to be talking about the Apple's streaming service, and we're going to be breaking down the top five most anticipated or biggest draw cards to the channel. And on top of that, we're going to be talking about the Joker's potential Oscar nominations for Best Picture. Let's break that down. Hello and welcome to What The Net, where we talk about the things that I want to talk about and you want to hear about, everything and anything on the net, movies, entertainment, all that stuff. My name's Jake Miller, and thanks for being here today. Now, before we get into the topics, if you haven't already, smash that subscribe button down below. I'm doing new videos on this channel weekly, so make sure you check them out. And without further ado, let's get into it. So streaming services. Around the world, we've got Netflix, Stan, Hulu, Amazon Prime, the DC Universe, HBO. It's getting out of hand. And we've known this has been coming for a while, but let's add on to that the Apple streaming service, Apple Plus. Now, I'm gonna be straight up with you guys. I'm not excited for it at all. I don't think they have big enough IPs to bring to the table. And with so, so many streaming services out there, what are they gonna do to bring people in? And I guess the biggest question is, once you've bought them in, what are you gonna do to make them stay? So on Tuesday, I did a video about the Apple iPhone 11 leaks, and I said there was gonna be a presentation the next day. Well, that presentation's happened. And within that, one of the big things that they talked about was the Apple Plus streaming service. They gave us some more information, some more shows that are coming, and they added onto the shows that we already knew about. And so I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the top five biggest shows that are coming that I think are the biggest draw cards for this streaming service. At number five, this is actually, believe it or not, my most anticipated one. I don't think it's the biggest draw card that they have, but I'm kind of excited for this. And the show's called Helpsters. It's by the guys who did Sesame Street, and it's meant to be targeted at kids. Remember that. And basically, they're going to be teaching the kids how to code. I had to re-look into that and watch the live panel again, just to double check that. Because we're talking toddlers, preschoolers, you know, kids under 10, I'm presuming. I'm 23 and I'm just getting the grasp on English. But to be honest, I kind of want to watch this show. Because I'd love to learn about coding. So that's the number five. And it's a weird one. It's actually the weirdest one on the list, I want to say. Number four, we've got a show called For All Mankind. Basically, the premise of this show is it goes back to when the man first landed on the moon. But in this world, Russia landed on the moon first. And then I think from there, what the trailers look like is that the American astronauts try to do bigger and better things and go to the moon and try and expand and go further out. But they make it that it's a huge twist that the astronauts are females. Maybe I guess because of the time place, it's a big deal. But they made it out like that was the big twist of the show. I'm more interested about how the Russians got there first. But it does star Joel Kinnaman. You'll probably know him from Suicide Squad. He's the guy who basically narrates everything. Rick Flagg. I know him from House of Cards. At number three, there's a show called Dickinson starring Haley Steinfeld. And it's meant to be a reimagining of Emily Dickinson. And it kind of looks like Emily Dickinson and Emily Dickinson's time period, but in kind of like a super bad setup. They're crumping, they're dancing. There's a little bit of coarse language, I'm guessing. I personally think it looks shit, but it's just a trailer. And I do like Haley Steinfeld. Side note, she's apparently in talks to be Kate Bishop in the new Hawkeye series. That's pretty awesome as well. Um, that's gonna be a streaming show. If you haven't seen it, there's a video on my channel. It's all about the Disney Plus streaming show. Let's check it out. At number two, we have The Morning Show. This looks interesting, but really only because of the cast. Jennifer Aniston, Steve Carell, Reese Witherspoon, and they all play news anchors in this, and it looks like it's all about aging and change. And lastly, at number one, we have C. Now, I think C is going to be the biggest draw card of the channel. It stars Jason Momoa, and it's got a pretty cool premise, to be honest. Imagine a world in the future where everyone's blind. And it's meant to be a post-apocalyptic sci-fi series. And so the premise of the show, as I said, everybody's blind, and these two kids are born that aren't blind. And it's the first two in in ages and it causes conflict and they are almost superhuman because they have the ability to see. I'm excited to see this because I like Jason Momoa and also the fight scenes where everybody's blind looks really cool because I'm presuming over time their other senses are really strengthened. Now in saying this, this is their top five shows and none of them really stand out to me. I think it is a lot of our fault because at least for me personally there's so much going out in the world right now and there's so many shows being created unless I already know the IP or I'm previously excited for it or there's a real actor that I like I'm probably going to give it a pass 
and seeing that I don't feel they have one big draw card or an already established IP. I don't know. I don't know how this is going to do. I think though it will do well in the first year because one of the draw cards, and that's what I said earlier, how they're going to separate themselves from the other streaming platforms. And how they're going to do that is by if you buy any Apple product, I'm guessing it's going to be the main ones like a watch, a laptop, an iPad, an iPhone, something over $600 maybe. You're going to get Apple TV free for a year. And if you don't want to buy an Apple product or you're not in need to buy another Apple product, it's only going to be $4.99 a month. So maybe this is going to be something that people will buy to try. But the question is, will they stay? Let me know down below in the comments your thoughts. Let me know if you're excited for the streaming platform. And let me know if you'd get it purely for one of those five shows. Okay, so now's the time I'd usually talk about the movie of the week. However, in Australia, there's only one movie coming out this week, which is Angry Birds 2. And you bet your ass I'm not going to watch that movie. On Tuesday, I put out my review for It Chapter 2. Check it out on the last episode of What The Net. But to be honest, what I'd recommend for this week, stay home. Watch something on one of the streaming channels. As I said, there's a lot out there right now. Or if you haven't, go see It Chapter 2, go see Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, maybe Angel has fallen, but we're just about to enter a period where we get a whole new bunch of movies. So that's my thoughts on this week's Movie of the Week. Now lastly, I want to talk about the Joker film. Again, as you guys know, I am super excited for this film. I think it's my number one film I'm excited for left for the year, and I was worried because I've got such high hopes. But as I said in one of my previous videos, it's getting amazing results. It's getting great reviews, and now they can add to that the winner of the Venice Film Festival. Now just to put that into a bit of context for you, winning the Venice Film Festival is a big deal. So if you go back to the last Oscars at the beginning of the year, Roma was nominated for an Academy Award, Best Picture. It didn't win, but a lot of people thought it could have, and that won at the Venice Film Festival. And if you go back the year before, Best Picture winner, The Shape of Water. And who won at the Venice Film Festival? The Shape of Water. So this this is a huge deal. We haven't really gotten into Oscar season yet, but this has given it a huge chance. I'd love to see a comic book movie make Best Picture. Now let me clarify, if it deserves it. You guys should know how much I love Black Panther. Loved it. I don't think it was worthy of getting nominated for Best Picture last year, and I loved that movie. And so I'm not going to be biased and say just because it's a comic book movie, throw it in, throw it in, make it Best Picture. No, 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 if it deserves it. And from what I'm hearing in reports, it sounds like it's gonna have a fighting chance. And so that makes me excited not only to see the movie, but also for the Oscars. The Academy Awards could be having Best Picture nominations in the comic book genre two years in a row. But I guess we'll have to see. Is your anticipation for the movie gone up? Are you more excited for the movie? And do you think this could be a movie that actually has Oscar potential? And I'm not talking the outskirts of the Oscar potential. I'm talking best picture, best director, best actor maybe. I guess we'll have to wait and see. And I cannot wait to see this movie. Okay guys, so that's the show today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below in the comments your thoughts on the topics today. I'd love to hear them. And if you're wondering where Wednesday's vlog was, I've actually moved it to a second channel called Watch My Life Vlogs. It's on my page and I'll link it below. Make sure you go check that out. I've got a new vlog coming every week and it's a lot of fun. Make sure whilst you're here, smash that subscribe button, leave a like, turn on notifications. That would be much appreciated. Thank you so much guys for watching. Have a great week and whatever your passion, work hard and be lucky.